part one is just what is you know what is the level of levels of exposure in the U.S. population and how does that compare to whatever you might cast as a reference exposure level. The second part was looking at this whole issue of exposure to not only mercury vapor but methyl mercury and lead. Um, all three of those substances are almost completely absorbed, whether it's from the gut or the lung. Uh, all three of them cross the blood-brain barrier. All three of them cause neurological harm. And we were asked, it, it's actually been on one of my want-to-do lists for a couple of years, but we got specifically asked as this effort to evaluate that information and determine whether or not they should continue to be um, evaluated in isolation, that you would deal with methylmercury from fish, and over there you deal with dental amalgam and mercury vapor exposure here, and you deal with lead exposure from whatever source over here, but they're always kept separate. And try and determine if they should continue to be kept separate. Well, it turns out that the um, Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, as well as EPA and other agencies, but ATSDR in particular, has given quite a bit of thought to this whole issue of exposure to mixtures to the point where they've actually published guidance on how to do an evaluation of a mixture of substances to determine whether or not they should be considered independently or as a group or as a mixture. And they've actually undertaken a number of evaluations of certain mixtures. One of those reports dealing with methylmercury and lead. And they, cons they concluded that, you know what, these should be at least treated um, additively, meaning that if you know co-exposure is occurring, they need to be considered together so that if you get half your safe dose of lead, you can't have any more than half of your safe dose of mercury. So the total together is, doesn't exceed one, I guess is the way you might look. The ratios wouldn't exceed one. And in their evaluation, they specifically stated that they, wouldn't, they were not going to consider mercury vapor because dental amalgam was deemed to be safe. So they excluded mercury vapor. So all we did was, well, we, got, we, we looked at the lead and methylmercury data, updating the assessment they published a few years ago, but we added mercury vapor into it because there's no reason why it should not be included in the mixture other than the fact that um, there was a bureaucratic decision not to include it in the evaluation that they had already performed. So we went through that process. It turns out that NHANES, again, the fabulous database that it is, it actually takes a subset of their participants and measures mercury in blood, lead in blood, mercury in urine, and you can actually take that small group, uh, the, that subset of their data, and all we did was, okay, for the data collected in 2003 and 2004, we said, let's get rid of all of the samples that were below detection, and any ones where there was some uncertainty about how valid the data was. So we only looked at where there was confirmed measurement of uh, and detection of inorganic mercury in blood, methylmercury in blood, and um, lead in blood. And it turns out there's 122 million Americans equivalent when you apply the statistics to extend that to the full population. There's 122 million Americans that on a general daily basis are exposed to those three substances simultaneously. And uh, when you look at the toxicological literature of when methylmercury and lead are um, applied at the same time to animals or humans or whatever, and then the, all three combinations, you have mercury vapor and methylmercury, mercury vapor and lead, methylmercury and lead, and then all three together. It shows that they should be evaluated as a group not independently. So, you know, the easy way to think about it is if you're exposed to all three of them, you should not be exposed to any more than one-third of the safe dose of lead, one-third of the safe dose of methylmercury, and one-third of the safe level of mercury vapor. And 
If one of them is gone, if, if there's no methylmercury exposure, the other two can increase a bit, but they can't go to their full reference dose level because you have to add those together and you would exceed the safe dose of the two combined. So you create what's called a hazard index. But like I said, it was one of those things that had been on my, gee, I'd like to do this list for a couple of years and got an opportunity to do it this time. And it's quite, I was quite um, astonished, I think, at how much of today's discussions, particularly by panel members, but also by the um, individuals who were selected to do those homework assignments, how much the whole issue of mixtures assessment was addressed that if you're exposed to methyl mercury, it's likely that the mercury vapor risks are added on top of that. They're not a separate entity. And the same for lead. And the interesting thing about this whole issue, for me, is really one, you know, it's often called social, social justice, or a social environmental justice issue. Those that are most likely to be exposed to lead are the poor the economically disadvantaged, to put it politically correct, um, who live in poorer housing, which is not maintained as well, and is known to be disproportionately contaminated with lead because of the historic um, content of lead in paint. Um, and it turns out that the poor are the most likely to get um, socially assisted dental treatments, and that will only be dental amalgam. Social assistance programs do not provide for the um, uh, fillings of any other material. It's got to be dental amalgam. So, you know, even if they're not eating fish, we know that that particular segment of the population is disproportionately exposed to lead on the one hand and state-sanctioned um, insertion of amalgam fillings with mercury exposure on the other hand. And you can't just treat those as two separate issues. They're both crossing the blood-brain barrier. They're both causing neurological harm by quite similar mechanisms. Um, and it's likely that the, those effects have to be considered jointly, not independently.